Okay, I started the recording. So, just in case you watch it online, uh, we are recording um, a first meeting about uh, a REST API specification generator project. It's one of Google Summer of Code 2020 projects. And right now we have um, a number of potential mentors and potential students on the call. Uh, Christian uh, will be driving this discussion and uh, we'll do our best to answer any questions uh, by students. Christian, the floor is yours. All right. So, oh, hey, welcome everyone. Again, like Alec was saying, if I guess the first thing I'll start off with is anyone have anything directly specific to talk about for this? Because, yeah, like I figured it was. Oh, oh yes, hello. Mentishpar, did you have something you were going to say? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, sh should I ask you a question? Uh, sure, yes. Uh, so, last time when I asked the details of REST API, so Oleg, Oleg has mentioned about the SAS uh, pause uh, GitHub link, right? Uh, in the Hudson packages. Hello? Yes, okay. So, hello? Look, yeah, hello? Oh, yes, I have gone. I have gone. I have gone through that uh, GitHub link of a uh, SAS boss uh, repository. Okay. So, uh, how to use that for getting REST API calls? Uh, well, uh, SAS boss is for annotations. It's not for SAS boss calls. So, like we discussed with you in the chat, it allows yeah, you to capture a particular. So okay, they, continue, continue. Sorry. Yeah, really have difficulties with hearing you. Uh, but yeah, again, this pause is just for capturing connotations. Do you see my screen now? Good, yeah, I was trying to figure out how to get. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so this is the screen, is, uh, one of the libraries we embed. We actually have a couple more, but this pause is being used to factor in many cases. And for example, mm -hmm. uh, if you go to Jenkins repository or to many plugin repositories, you can find annotations like exported there. And here you can see that, for example, uh, there is, uh, take something easier. So there is a whole my page uh, where you can go and uh, just uh, um, uh, see details about your user. Mm, so, and here you can see that uh, there are some um, information provided. So basically when you go here, you can see that uh, there is uh, a name, uh, authenticated, etc. of a user, and uh, this is exported annotation. So how it works, I'll just open one of my uh, instances. Yeah, I don't have so many online instances, but this one should do the job. Okay, so here I just go to who am I? Okay, and this is being corroded. And just a second. Um, let's go to manage Jenkins, it should be available from there if I get no. Okay. Let's take a look at the code why it's not available. Mm, I believe it's just because of uh, routing of the request. Oh. oh, yeah, so it was just case. So here you can see that I get some details, like name, uh, is authenticated, authorities. So this information is not uh, being generated by Jenkins automatically, there is page rendering for that. But there is REST API. And this is get REST API where you can uh, retrieve some additional information. I click JSON API and uh, here I can see some information. So you can see that uh, basically uh, there is a bunch of groups being pulled from my GitHub account. I believe that there is nothing secret in there. So there is a bunch of authorities I can use for security. There is authentication, etc. 
So this information is being generated by Stepler. So this Stepler is just a framework uh, for uh, data binding and other things. And uh, it uses annotation processing to provide you this information. So these exported annotations then get uh, processed and exported to REST API. So as a developer, for example, if you wanted to generate specification for this particular REST API, you could have gone through these annotations using CESP and uh, this output or specification, but it works for that. It doesn't work for, for the use cases uh, which we discussed uh, uh, before the JSOC meetings. So for example, if there is, uh, let's see, you see the strange blue thing here? Yes, yes. Oh, I'm not okay. sure what I've done. Uh, okay. So let's go just to uh, job Java. And here, for example, do description or whatever. I know, do description. Yeah, let, uh, let's say do description. So this is a method which accepts or serves uh, the job description. And here you can see that basically it's uh, the single endpoint, but depending on what uh, you send, get or post you will get different results. So forget it uh, returns your information. Uh, for post, um, it uh, just uh, accepts uh, the information. So we could uh, go to a page, invoke this endpoint, and then uh, get uh, this description. And again, it still qualifies as a part of REST API in Jenkins. Or, or there are some other annotations, other use cases, but um, uh, this part of the logic is quite complex and it may require a lot of analysis or maybe redesign of how Jenkins annotations work because it might be acceptable for this project to come up with a proposal which says, okay, let's do annotations for all these uh, REST API calls. If you want uh, to get them generated automatically, there will be additional requirements. But right now, yeah, it's quite straightforward. It's just being handled by step, uh, depending on uh, uh, many assumptions. Okay, but uh, means normally we have to assume, right? For, uh, for because there were no annotations for these type of function methods, right? Yeah. So how to proceed from SysPos? So we can, mm -hmm. we have to. Yeah, again, SysPos won't help you in this use case. Uh, you can't use it. I can use it, but only it is uh, SysPos is only capable of getting the extension points, right? Extension annotation. Mm, uh, it's capable of doing, uh, getting any annotation, but it's not capable. For example, in Jenkins, there are also option to set annotations like get. I'm not sure whether we have uh, it in this file. Last we have shown that. Yeah, uh, so I uh -huh. can ju I, uh, just I show it. That. Okay. Okay, so you can uh, process annotations using SysPos, and if you explore uh, Jenkins REST API documentation, uh, there is a bunch of them. For example, uh, for other things, like one I presented with do something, what you could do, you could just uh, process how Stepler code overrides, um, behaves, because you can find uh, a lot of things uh, there. You can just try finding there. Uh, no guarantee it works. Um, it's just a test. Mm, so, yeah, I guess. It's not uh, going to work as well mm, as this. So, but yeah, you can just uh, go through this code. Uh, so yeah, let's just try looking for rest. Again, I'm not uh, sure what exactly I'm looking for. So it may take some iterations. Uh, but yeah, here, for example, uh, we can also see some uh, additional code, for example, uh, dispatcher code. Uh, which are uh, basically processes uh, um, requests and uh, mapping them to objects. So you can uh, see how it's been handled there um, and uh, try to reverse engineer that and probably reply some bits of this code uh, to specification generator. But it might be just a second uh, part of the project because just supporting get APIs uh, using annotations could be a good first step. Okay. Okay, okay. So if somebody wants a stepler deep dive, I need to prepare. 
Uh, but yeah, the code is there, so you can take a look. Uh, somebody has raised hand. Yes. Hello. Mm -hmm. oh, was, there, was there a question? Yeah. Yes, uh, I'm asking about uh, step is step is acting as a bridge between like uh, we're importing various libraries and dependencies. So um, Stepler is acting as a bridge like in between or what? I'm not getting why are we using bridge here? Uh, Stepler here. Mm -hmm. So Stepler is basically a bridge framework. So it translates, uh, oh, okay, yeah, nice attempt. But anyway, uh, yeah, there is no really readme in this repository, uh, but it's an engine which receives requests. So it's HTTP or HTTPS, and uh, it can uh, map them to Java calls or vice versa. So if you take a look, uh, for example, a job here, we can see that uh, there's, let's say, do submit. Um, okay, do, delete. Okay, uh, again, do description. So here you can see that uh, there is Stepler request, Stepler response, and other methods. So it uh, implies that uh, these methods are actually handled by Stepler. So Stepler uh, basically is um, logic which receives a form submission or any kind of other HTTP request, processes them and maps it to Java objects and to uh, endpoints in the Java code. So it uh, does all the mapping which you could expect, for example, from a Spring Framework, from Quarkus or other things. In our case, it, it's Stepler doing that because it's a historical piece of code. Does it answer your question? I have to search it, I don't think so. Oh. I'm not clear yet. I have to search it, what is Okay, uh, so you can uh, review some information about request rope, it you can mapping. Again, what I was always showing at the previous meeting, there is a bunch of jobs and uh, there are some jobs related to Stepler, mm -hmm. uh, especially one for, uh, for example, uh, step the request dispatcher filtering and uh, fragmentation. So this job 218 can provide you some insights about how Stepler works in terms of um, common requests and filters. So it can provide you some insights and provide links to other documentation because yes, yeah, Stepler itself isn't documented uh, as well as we would like. So even I guess as part of this project is maybe not 100% related, but you can, if, you, if you're doing research, you can make, well, even ahead of time, you can make pull requests with documentation examples like to these repositories and that can help with understanding and then um, be able to help other people figure out what's going on with the stapler as well. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. So we can find more documentation in the developer mailing list. But yeah, right now my suggestion would be to start from um, get APIs because get APIs uh, um, are more easy to understand and more easy to implement. So if you do prototyping, it's better to start from there. Okay, any yeah. other questions? Okay. So, Christine, what would be your 
perception about this project um, what would you like uh, to be achieved uh, with regards to that right so um i think the for me it's like i was kind of looking for something that would be able to be easily or like there's just a little bit more modern for whenever you go to look for and the basically a list of the different rest apis within jenkins I'm really honestly hoping that we'd end up with something like a open api document that would at least you know be a little bit more digestible um be easier to read for people who are kind of working with anything like with jenkins itself because there are a lot of APIs and there are, it is kind of, there are powerful things that you can do with them, especially if you start putting in some of the plugins, but it's very difficult to, to figure out where they all are. So if there was just kind of a, maybe a URL based off of Jenkins where you could see what is installed and like what APIs are available and it's in an open API format, that would be a lot easier for people to understand what's going on. Um, I think if there was a way too that we could keep I can, it's, I know it's a difficult task, but being able to also publish that somewhere on the website um, so people will be able to know that A, this is even an option for you to be able to do, and to also then, um, I guess, include it in build, continue building into Jenkins documentation. Um, that would be useful as well. Um, so I think it would be easier to start with something that is at least local and we could. You know, update our documentation to point to hey there's this there's now this document that you can look at inside of your Jenkins to see what the, the HTTP response like options are the codes how to be able to use it and then maybe eventually pub, maybe like later on in phase three or I don't know if it's even be able to do it is figure out a way to be able to generate this and publish it to the website as well so it's just an easier list yeah so yeah. I'm just uh, screen sharing one of the oh, 2019 you. results Mm -hmm. so basically a folder authorization project. Um, mm -hmm. It's a project created by our student Abhidya Sharma. And uh, as a part of this project, he created um, um, the repository on Swagger Hub for, for folder authorization. And here you mm -hmm. can see REST API calls uh, supported by the plugin now. Mm -hmm. uh, well, mm, it has one of those weakness because it's uh, actually generated manually. So there is no automation for that. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, if there was automation, we should at least create skeletons. It would be a good step. And again, right. it can be done incrementally. So nobody requires you to create full specification uh, as a first step or for what it was during the entire project. Right. So we need to start somewhere. Exactly. But this document, see how it just it makes it so much easier to know what's going on with the plugin. Yeah. But if, since it's done manually, it requires someone to continue to make sure the document is up to date. So it can easily yeah. fall behind. So being able to auto-generate something, even if we start off with just being able to do the git post, <laughs> making the git, um, that would be useful as well. It just, yeah, this is a great example of something that makes it a little bit easier for people to read, to find out what's going on. Good examples. I think it will really help people who want to be able to use the APIs, or even to figure out that APIs are an option. Because sometimes I don't even know if people <laughs> know that you can use APIs to be able to do things with Jenkins. So. Mm -hmm. That's right. Actually, <laughs> one of the topics you can consider is when you generate the specifications, because there are basically two ways. One way is that you generate them uh, in runtime, so when Jenkins runs. And we do it for several other projects, so where you can go, for example, that's my instance, for the CI Jenkins IO. So here, for example, uh, you can uh, get uh, documentation for pipeline or documentation for mm -hmm. uh, configurations code based on installed plugins. Most mm -hmm. likely it will fail because there is uh, still a bug there which you haven't fixed. Uh, but yeah, uh, this uh, reference documentation specification which be which has been generated on the flight, depending on the plugin sets you use, etc. Mm -hmm. It's one of the ways to do that. 
um, and same is basically used, for example, by pipeline. Because for yep. pipeline, you, again, you can uh, get the documentation generated. Another mm -hmm. way, which might be potentially interesting, is uh, generating it during the build time. So when you build uh, the plugin uh, using whatever magic uh, to again uh, generate a REST API specification for a particular component. And then uh, we could have another model which combines uh, this documentation for uh, user, uh, for an instance specific documentation. It might be not that trivial, but it's also doable. Mm, so you can uh, review one of these approaches, I guess. Right, like neither one is wrong. I think it would be easier to talk about in your proposal which one you'd like to focus on first, and then maybe create a library that could be pulled into different places, and that way it can be reused. Um, mm -hmm. So basically, it turns up uh, is what you prefer. If you like front end right. development, exactly. <laughs> uh, then yeah, it's more on the Jenkins side you could do. Uh, mm -hmm. If you like back end development, yeah, you can just uh, take a plugin. And there is a plugin called Maven HPI plugin, which basically includes uh, the most of uh, Jenkins specific Maven functionality. And uh, for example, you could just add logic there, or maybe as a library um, and again integrate it into that plugin. Uh, it's not a Jenkins plugin, it's a plugin for Maven. But yeah, uh, design principles are more or less the same. Okay. Looks like everyone is completely confused. <laughs> Giving you a lot of links to look at. But <laughs> mm -hmm. right. So. Okay. Any questions, any additional information or pointers we could provide? So, yeah, again, what we discussed in chats and in JSOC meetings, if you want uh, to do a quick start with this project, the easiest way is to just uh, focus on getter APIs maybe write a really, really simple prototype which uses Cespos and uh, pulls this information, um, maybe in a text format or whatever. So you don't need to generate open API, but you can start uh, from something and yeah, mm -hmm. for example, propose your pull re first pull request for that towards the Jenkins code and we could start from there. Because, well, there are many ways to start, but yeah, again, getter APIs is the most straightforward one. Okay, is a text format enough for, for a pull request? Or code, or code, do you expect code? Uh, well, uh, if you create oh. a pull request, of course it would be code. Ha, means uh, I thought of MD file of uh, ex uh, expressing the way. So. MD file would be okay, or you can just uh, generate HTML and put it on the API docs. Mm -hmm. So whatever you find uh, convenient. Right now, yeah. yeah, you just explore. So whatever you explore, if it contributes towards your project proposal, just do it. So okay, mm -hmm. so I got the things. How to do? Miss, I have got a clear idea with with Salesforce and. Uh, mm -hmm. Stapler, I have to go through the Stapler to understand how it really it's working and uh, to extract. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, I have, I want to do implementation so that I will get an idea of uh, how Salesforce is really working. Okay. Okay. Or uh, can I get uh, okay? If I will try to explore, if I face any issues, I will contact you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's right then. Yeah, same for all other students who might be interested to just take a look at different implementations, uh, different approaches. And again, we try to keep all the information public. Mm -hmm. So we will be sharing uh, the details. And uh, for example, if you want uh, to collaborate between each other to somehow make uh, projects uh, uh, independent, it's possible. So for example, if you want to collaborate and split it somehow, or if you just want to, uh, to do some prototyping and uh, don't want uh, to step on each other's toes, it's also possible. So again, we use public channels uh, so that we yes. can prevent that. But again, at the application phase, it's not a big uh, concern. 
So even if you propose to pull requests, we should basically do the same. It won't um, impact uh, anyone because here yeah, we'll just take a look at these two pull requests and uh, take them into consideration. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, Pretty. Sometimes, like uh, uh, if our PR that doesn't merge for an issue that we you know, for an issue or something we want to uh, get. So what can we do then? Like we have to wait for PR to be merged or we just start contributing or what? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so in Jenkins, especially in Jenkins Core and uh, other kernel plugins, a pull request cycle may be quite long because we need to verify the stability, etc. Um, and uh, for you, if a particular pull request is staged, is already enough. You can uh, move on to other area. Unless you're blocked, you can keep exploring that and contributing to the same pull request. So for example, if you take me, probably not the best example, but you can see that uh, there are maybe a dozen pull requests. I uh, made a cleanup, but still there should be a sev a sev a several pull requests. And you can uh, do the same. So as long as they are independent, as long as they can be reviewed separately, um, uh, they, um, you can just uh, keep submitting them. And if you need help with reviews, uh, so just think uh, us in GitHub channels, because yeah, sometimes pull requests uh, fall uh, through the cracks. We try to improve the situation across the community. But uh, yeah, if you submit a pull request to a random plugin, uh, you may need to raise visibility so that uh, you can help with reviews. Right, generally people are incredibly helpful. They want to, you know, work on the pull request and not let it sit around for a long time. But yes, like you can always mention on the channel or ask on the developer's mailing list and people are pretty responsive. Mm -hmm. That's right. And yeah, if you prepare your proposals, actually uh, trying to do some contributions could help. Yeah, mm -hmm. because yeah, we will do our best to ensure that uh, there is community about around this project. And for mm -hmm. this particular project, I'm not concerned at all. We will have uh, um, a dozen of stakeholders easily across the community interested in that. Right. Uh, may, maybe more, but. Uh, yeah, again, uh, just trying to do something is uh, the best way to explore how it works. Right, and I guess also if you, like Olivia was saying, all the stakeholders, if they have awareness early, they can also help. They'll be you know, excited that someone's interested in looking at this and be able to, you know, get involved a little bit earlier and another, more people to ask questions to and to yeah. um, share other perspectives. <laughs> um, Oh, when we have to start uh, submitting a proposal. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can take a look at the JSOC timeline. Um, so there is official timeline and it states that um, application period uh, opens on March 16th. So just in one week. Uh, but uh, this is the first day when you can uh, officially submit your proposal through the JSOC website. But it doesn't mean that you cannot work on your proposals now, because what we usually recommend students to do is you create a proposal draft. Uh, you can uh, already know what uh, information is expected because uh, uh, Google has a student guide and we also have uh, a student guide on the Jenkins website. So. You can just go to this page and you can see that uh, there is information summarizing what we expect from student proposals. Well, it's mostly built on the Google's student guide, but we have some additional uh, expectations. So you can uh, start drafting your proposal and you can just submit your draft through the mailing list. Uh, so you don't need to wait, uh, to wait until March 16th if you already have something to propose and to discuss. You just submit a document and uh, people start reviewing that. Though, yeah, right now um, it may be iterations might be long, but uh, yeah, I hope that uh, you will be able to review all the proposals timely.
Okay, any other questions? Um, yeah. Yes. So, uh, my question is like, uh, um, I'm new to Jenkins platform. So, uh, do I have to just go firstly go through what is Jenkins, the Jenkins platform, be familiar with it, and then start contributing, or I should just go to the GitHub platform, GitHub, and check to the PRs and stuff? Well, mm, it, if you are not familiar with Jenkins, it would definitely make sense to try it out. Uh, so, uh, what we usually recommend, you can just run Jenkins, uh, for example, in a Docker uh, container uh, or locally, and uh, you can uh, just uh, try automating some of your projects. I guess you have something uh, in your universities, for example, Maven projects with Java or something with C++. So, you could just uh, try using Jenkins to automate uh, the build for your project as a first step. Uh, so, just to study it and its uh, features. And there would be a, oh, sorry, go for it. Uh, I was thinking also to, oh, sorry, go for it. Oh, I was also thinking that sometimes with, if you start to run Jenkins, it might help put some of these, you know, projects that we've talked about in context as well. So mm -hmm. you might be able to see, well, Stapler talks about, you know, constructing URLs inside of Jenkins. It's like, all right, so now if I create, um, some jobs I can click and see you know the URL being generated and I can you, you can kind of start to see how things are built so that might help as well so yeah I say you can see the folder infrastructure here and it, I think it will help under some of these projects that may seem a little bit more like, a little bit more confusing it might help clarify what they're doing <laughs> that's right and yeah, you can explore uh, the things like uh, yeah, probably this is not the best instance. So we have CI Jenkins IO where you can uh, try some REST APIs. Uh, but yeah, heads up that uh, a number of REST APIs today is blocked. Uh, so it's probably not the best project. But if you have your own running instance or if you find uh, another public instance, um, because many projects like Adopt OpenGDK, Apache, etc., they use Jenkins. So you can find a lot of public instances and explore how they're organized and what is uh, being used. Yeah, thanks to submit for the link. Okay, anything else for today? Uh, if I could go a little off topic, can I just uh, throw it out there that I could add to your list of QI terms a similar discussion for the fingerprint uh, project? Mm -hmm. You mean the REST API? Yeah. What? Sorry. Uh, the finger, uh, the cloud native, uh, the finger, uh, external mm -hmm. storage for fingerprint project. Mm -hmm. uh, just, you know, uh, similar conversation like this uh, a, a meeting just okay i'll get it organized right yeah i, I think we'd it would be really helpful to have the people who um would be mm -hmm. potential mentors in that i'm not as familiar with that project this is just <laughs> i just heard that you know oleg is there and oleg is the mentor so oh, I just, okay. yeah <laughs> i read it to my to-do list so sorry, I'm really behind all my uh, projects this week because yeah, if you open uh, Jenkins change logs and LCS change logs, you can uh, see why. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'll uh, try to catch up uh, tonight. So also for the potential students on this call, if you're still here and listening, if you look in the Zoom chat, uh, Sumit has put a link to setting up your development environment with Jenkins. It's a very good walkthrough on setting that up, so I wanted to make sure we called that out. Thanks, Maki. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah. 
anything else? Or should we just close the call? I think so, if there's no other questions. Okay. So again, thanks uh, to everybody for your time and for interest in the Jenkins project. And once you have applications, please ping us so we can organize something. Thank you. Thanks, Oleg, for, thanks Oleg and Christine, everyone, for uh, organizing this. Um, Thank you all for bringing your questions. It's good. We're here, we're here to help you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thanks, bye. all. Bye, bye, bye. Thank bye. you, everybody. It was Thank good you. to see you, Martin. Good to see you, too. Bye. Bye. bye.